I can't be the only one that has ever gotten excited or at least a little bit interested when I hear of a new product or service released from a company. They typically do so by releasing a blog post and or a highly produced and polished video to demonstrate those new capabilities that they're releasing. Recently, OpenAI did this with their Codex CLI tool. It's their agentic programming tool that allows you to give it prompts and it goes off and runs and does the task that it needs to do to fulfill that prompt. So with that, here is OpenAI's Codex CLI product announcement video and demonstration that they have here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what they did and then try and replicate it and see how it works doing it ourselves. So first thing that they did in the video is they took an existing code base, which is their OpenAI FM website, and they had the Codex CLI tool explain the code base to them, then they ran the project, and then they tried to change it so that it can enable uh, dark mode or light mode based on the operating systems theme setup. Okay, so here it is running looks exactly the same as in the video. And now we're going to run the codex CLI tool to enable dark mode capabilities and light mode capabilities, depending on the operating system settings for that. All right, first up, they ran codex in the command line, I've already installed it and signed into my account, I'm going to save you the details on that. Okay, I ran Codex by default in this version 0.3.0. It seems to default to the Codex Mini latest model. So I'm gonna figure out how to switch it to the 03 model to make sure we have a fair comparison to the video. All right, looking at the config documentation up on the Codex repository in GitHub, it shows that by default, the model it uses Codex Mini latest now. So if we wanted to override that, we can use this config model equals 03 setting. So I'm going to do that. All right. The next thing they did from here is they asked Codex using the O3 model to explain this code base to me and how do I run it, which I know already, but I want to see how it goes. And if we get a similar result to what they showed in the product release video stream error, I'm getting some errors here in the messages. The events are being blocked. I installed version 0.3.0. That's the latest and greatest. However, that was just released like 20 hours ago at the time of recording this. And so I thought maybe it's a bug with that latest version. So I reverted back to the 0.2.0 version and I still get the same results or similar results with this background events, stream error. But now it's saying 400 bad requests. The organization must be verified to generate reasoning summaries. This is crazy invasive, I think, but they want to verify my identity at the organization level. So I signed into my, I'm in my personal account and it's telling me that they want to verify an ID check using their partner persona. I click on that. It gives me a QR code, a personal link, and, a, and there's a button below that says send email. All that's below. But look at what this says. It says to verify your identity, we need access to a camera. We'll send you a secure link for continuing on your phone. No app download is required. They need to like physically look at my face to verify me to use Codex CLI. I'm so, I don't, I don't understand. All right, update on this. Uh, I did go to the link uh, on my phone and it wanted to use my camera on my phone to take a picture of my government ID, which led me to be like, why is it wanting that? And it's because, well, let me show you. When you go to the link that it's telling me in the error messages about organization settings and verify organization, you can see it says verify your organization to access protected models. And I'm like, I'm not trying to access a protected model. So then I went and searched OpenAI protected models, which led me to this summary from my browser saying that they uh, have implemented measures to protect their models. And it's requiring identity verification for access to these latest models. It's aimed to prevent malicious or rogue developers from accessing the models and ensuring that only authorized organizations can use them. Additionally, OpenAI has tightened access to its models due to concerns about AI model mimicry. I like saying that word. Where rival models may be trained on OpenAI's outputs without permission. To address this, OpenAI has introduced government ID verification for developers seeking access to its advanced models. This move is also intended to protect OpenAI's intellectual property and prevent the unauthorized use of its models. I don't want to give them an image 
of my government ID. So at this point, folks, I'm gonna call it quits on trying OpenAI's Codex CLI any further because I don't want to give it that information about me right now, an image of my government ID and that sort of thing. It's not worth it to me because I have other tools available to me that I can use without having to fork over that level of personally identifiable information beyond what they already have on me anyway. Hey, future me here, sorry to interrupt the video, but I wanted to give you some more context on some things that I learned since recording that part of the video. I went over to the repository for the Codex CLI tool to see if anybody else was running into this issue and I found some other folks reporting this as well. So if you recall, the error that I was seeing in the console was stream error, background event type of thing. So I searched for that in the issues on the GitHub repository for Codex. And this first one that pops up here, we could see it was from last week. It was specifically for version 0.3.0, but it's happening to folks in newer versions that have since been released as well. Basically, they're getting that same event and reporting that, you know, nothing's happening. They're not able to use Codex as a result of that. And so we see a lot of people replying to this in the issue saying that they're having the same issue. They've tried it on different versions of things and so forth. But what I came to find, which is what you saw me talk about earlier in the video, I have to go to my organization and verify the organization with a government ID, which I am not looking to do at this point in time. Some folks found that the response that I shared helped them get past the bug. Other folks mentioned that they had to add credits to their OpenAI API account in order to get past it as well. A third potential workaround, an option you can take, instead of using OpenAI's O-related models like O3 or O4, or the default one, which is the Codex Mini, you could opt to use one of their older models like GPT 3.5 Turbo, or you can even set up other providers outside of OpenAI if you'd like, such as Azure or others that are out there. In order to do that, you'll need to look up their documentation around the OpenAI directory that's within the project structure and adding a config.toml file, T-O-M-L. And that'll give you a jump start in using other AI providers with Codex CLI. Needless to say, I'm not gonna go any further with it right now. I'm gonna wait until they come up with a better solution for this. I'm not entirely sure the specifics around why they need to verify my account beyond what they've already done, especially having payment capabilities that are going on there. They can track abuse that way. I know that's one of the reasons why they have the verification, but I personally feel it's excessive. But I'm open to hearing more reasons why that I'm not aware of that can help with them mitigating issues and risks that they're seeing on their end of things. I'm curious though, what are your thoughts? Have you tried it out? Have you reached this point, run into this bug? Have you gone further and given them access to your government issued ID? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna hear and maybe we'll come back and revisit this tool at a later point on the channel. If that does it for this video, I apologize that we didn't quite get to fulfill the purpose of the video, which is testing out OpenAI's Codex CLI, but maybe we'll get a chance to do that in the future. If you somehow got value out of this video, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.